for me, you know, like you just said, you've got a product, it's built, it's tested, it's ready to leave our building. Um, I would say that the first step there, which is kind of our last step, we do um, an outgoing QC check. Now it varies from product to product what that entails. Um, some products is there's very little outgoing QC. Basically, we just kind of check that records are accurate and and complete. We'll check serial numbers and verify that we've you know verify that we've traced that serial number. Um, some records and and QC is wildly in depth. Um, there's records to check and there's um, forms to fill out. There's all kinds of uh, checks and balances in place on the product before it can leave the building. And that's all driven by the requirements and the customer and what type of product it is. But um, typically our products, once they're functionally built and tested, qualified there, they'll go through that, that outgoing QC to verify that all the documentation surrounding that product um, is complete and in place and, and um, can allow that product to leave and we still have traceability of it. Right, it's a, it's a risk-based um, activity. Um, products that are very low risk, we, we make sure that all the parts are there and we put it in the box and you know all of the testing has been done and then out it goes. For products that are especially risky like medical devices, um, there can be pages of documentation that has to be pulled in and checked carefully um, before we will release it to be shipped. Um, certificates of compliance, which go out that, that state that exactly what the DMR level of the product is or the revision level of the product so that the customer can track which products, which serial numbers or which DMR levels. So, but that's all kind of risk-based. So now it's gone through QC. We've we've got all the records complete, filed. Everything's good there. We have traceability of the product. Well, now it has to get delivered. So the first thing that comes into my mind goes back a little bit to design, but now you're executing on the packaging. And there's a lot of thought that goes into the packaging of a product because depending on where it needs to ship and how it needs to ship, um, there's a lot of considerations there. Um, one of the one of the big ones that comes into mind is is this thing going to be shipping um, like in a corrugated box by itself on the back of a FedEx truck, or is it going to be shipping twenty to a pallet all wrapped and strapped, and it'll be shipped on a pallet, multiple pallets on the back of a big eighteen wheeler truck? How is this thing leaving the building? Where is it going? Um, because it's a lot different shipping something across the street versus shipping something across the world. And and considerations need to be made for that on that packaging to to get it where it needs to go safely. So you know, you've got the product, you've got the the outgoing QC. Now it's gonna go into this packaging and be prepared for shipment. So it, it does go back into the design because you have to design the packaging and there's all kinds of testing and, and compliance there that you have to worry about. Um, but adherence to that packaging configuration is important um, because if something's not shipped right or not prepped right for shipment, uh, that can lead to damage of the product, like physical damage. It can lead, we've even seen stuff that we calibrate the system um, in-house and if you vibrate it across the world for three weeks the calibration goes out of whack so you need to be able to um, handle that so you got to package it so you, you got to put this this complete product into a box and make sure that it's going to be safe when it leaves the, the packaging design is every bit as complex as any part on the product in, in fact i i treat it as just another component of the product. Because a product, as Mike says, needs to be delivered to some location where the customer is. And just because you might throw the box out doesn't mean that its design is any less important than the design of the product itself. It has to perform. So there are specifications. What does it look like? How is it labeled? Is there artwork on it? 
Um, what kind of testing does it have to go through? There's ASTM testing, there's ISTA testing, and you've got to get together um, with, with the customer to talk about, you know, what kind of standards are going to be used. Uh, large instruments that are shipped in crates are tested to different standards than um, things in a small box because the things in small boxes tend to be literally thrown around. So you've got to make sure that your your product is going to survive that. So it, there's a whole design effort around packaging design. So everything that touches this goes back to someone's got to think about it, make sure they do the design, test the design to show that it's adequate before you can even put it in the box. I think then it can go. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, right. So so then you put it on a truck or and, and the truck takes it to an airplane or wherever it's going or a warehouse 